three spars, three coats of epoxy done. I would like to varnish the spars as well to get uh, UV protection. Epoxy is sensitive to UV and if it's exposed to too much it'll start cracking and peeling off and just generally looking shite and uh, not doing what it's supposed to do which is be waterproof. So you really got to cover it with paint or a UV resistant varnish or something like that. So my plan is to varnish the spars. I like the way they look. I don't want to paint them. I think they look pretty good the way uh, they turned out. The boom's got a lot of character, but uh, the mast and the yard, I think actually ended up looking pretty good in just their sort of wooden form. So I want to varnish them to protect them from the UV rays, but it's gotten really cold here and we're just coming into winter. It's not really getting above oh, 10 degrees at the, at the most and it won't get above that really for another few months. So I can't find any varnish that will really dry under that temperature. Maybe there is some. Maybe I should just um, keep researching a bit. What I thought I might do is leave the varnishing until it gets a bit warmer and just go ahead with the rest of the build as, as it is. I don't want them to get damaged, but they won't be out in the sun. I mean, I'm storing them in this garage and I will only really be out sailing probably for a few hours at a time, um, you know, no more than once a week really. It's a bit too cold to go sailing right now. I'll probably just go sailing to prove that the boat's done and then retreat quickly to land, who knows. Point I'm trying to make is they won't be exposed to much UV light. So I'm accepting the risk. I will just varnish them when I can when it gets warmer. I guess what I'm trying to say is I think it'll be fine and I want to move on. Next step for the spars is getting the leathering on them. There's going to be a bit of leather up here at the tip of the mast where uh, the halyard block rests on. Somewhere in the middle-ish of the yard where it rests against the mast and likewise sort of the front third of the boom. They will have leather wrapped around and sewn on them to prevent chafing against the mast there. There's some leather. It's uh, approximately a couple of mils thick and I think it's like half a cow shoulder. It's that much and it should be enough. It's just looking at the plans. The required lengths of leather is uh, 350 mil length for the boom, 200 mil for the mast tip, and 660 mil for the yard. Also, I need to figure out exactly how wide those strips will need to be. Okay, I've marked on the boom, let's see here, and the yard, and the mast, where the leather is gonna go. Let's call that uh, one seven, Two hundred. This tape is a bit, so uh, I'll take it from here. Then we'll have to adjust it a little, I guess. You know, that looks like the exact circumference of the boom, actually. Yeah, that is two hundred as well. Goes down here. It's a little bit small, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. We definitely have enough leather in this sheet to do all the leathering that we need for the spars, but we don't really have enough to make too many mistakes, or really any. So I'm going to be a bit cautious with this. It's going to draw a nice straight edge. Yeah, I'm not. It's nice and straight on the edge. It's better than I'm going to get it, I think. This is the boom leather. That needs to be 350 long, but I'm going to make it 400. Maybe I should be riding on the other side. I bet this cow never realized that he'd become part of the boat. Well, I got a knife here, and I guess I just cut him out, eh? I don't know. I've never really cut leather before. Okay, this seems to be the exact way you do it. Boom leather. Mask tip. 
get a few constrictor knots holding the leather on, you can see, yeah, that it's uh, overlapping a fair amount. I wanted to be cautious, so I reckon if I trace along the edge here, that should give us the perfect amount. I was reading another scamp blog. Can't remember what it was. It wasn't Christine de Merchants, but it was one blog. This one. Anywho, and it was talking about leathering of the spars. And that guy reckoned uh, you could uh, wet them, wet the leather, and it would stretch a little bit more. So he wet the leather before he sewed it on, so it stretched a bit, and then it dried, and I guess it kind of constricted and, I don't know. So if it's a little bit short, it's not the end of the world. Well, that gave us that line there, which you might not be able to see, but looks reasonable. So let's snip that off and see how it went. That's quite loose. Looks like it could come even in a little bit more. So I might give that three mils, maybe see how that goes. Pretty good. It's a little bit loose there. This longer one's a bit more of a pain in the ass to do. try some of this uh, leather sewing. First I need to put the holes for the stitches. So I've just 3D printed a little guide here. It's just got a bunch of uh, holes at regular intervals. Uh, these are eight millimeters apart. I was reading up and that's probably a pretty good distance for this kind of leather and this kind of yarn. So I'm just gonna drill. I wanted to do one millimeter holes but I don't have a one millimeter drill bit but the one and a half I have seems like a good size so just going to drill a bunch of holes in each side of the leather so that I can sew it together. That didn't even take that long. Two nice rows of holes, eight millimeters apart and in from the edge four millimeters so when I do the stitches they'll form a perfect square cross. Leather's been cut to size and the holes have been drilled in it, ready to be put there. So what I'm using is two of these standard tapestry needles, size 18, and this number 8 whipping twine. It's a waxed whipping twine. You're supposed to use a waxed thread. Um, I'm not sure what difference that is from the whipping twine, but this stuff works pretty good. I did do an experiment with this tarred twine and it was just impossible. This uh, it frayed so easily it was just a huge pain in the butt. So wax twine. From this point here to this point here that's how long the leather is. And I'm going to measure out I think eight times this length in twine and that should do the trick. I read online somewhere that you should use five times but I tried that um, and I didn't have enough. So then I tried 10 times and I had too much. So maybe eight. And you know, you have to pull a lot of slack out of it. So I think maybe eight times should be enough. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain to thread the needles, but they stay on once they're on. So I've got one on each end of the twine that I cut. I've just got a constrictor knot here just to hold the leather on while things uh, get started. You want to pull one of them through one side, one of them through the other side. And it's a bit of a pain because this is so long. <laughs> there we go, that's what you want. You want to make sure that this is basically in the middle. Find the end of this one. So you want to get that up through here, making sure you don't go through the other thread there, pull that all the way through. The same with this one. Once I pull it through I usually just kind of pull on that a bit and see if I can, uh, if it's caught. Pull that tight and that's the start. 
you can see it pulls in a lot. I have about half a centimeter gap in between these two when I start. Now, to begin the first pull the stitch down through here and up through this stitch. Yeah, I was using curved needles before, which was kind of easier, but kind of not. So I thought that the uh, annoyances with it really outweigh, didn't want really outweighed by the pros. You get the other one. And do the same thing on the other side. We're also making sure that we don't put our needle through this thread. Just give it a bit of a pull. Seems okay. And then up through the other side. And there you go. You got the first sort of completed stitch there. And then you just continue that, you know, this one and that one, this one and that one, doing that cross pattern until you get to the very end. And always making sure, I like to sort of test this after each stitch because it's a huge pain to go back and fix it, that these move freely and they're not caught in the other thread that goes past it. And then it's just persistence for the rest of it. This is the starboard side of the boom. Forward end aft end, top bottom, there's a starboard. The starboard side of the boom goes against the mast. So the stitching on this is on the wrong side. Yeah. Well, this was the first one I did anyway out of the three. I used this uh, tarred twine instead of the waxed stuff that I used for the other ones. And it's also quite loose. I wasn't sure how much it would stretch, etc. So this is not an ideal one anyway. So doing this won't be as painful as it otherwise would have been. Well, that's better. Hopefully I've got it on the right side this time. Pretty sure. Forward, aft. Starboard port, stitches on port, starboard side to mast. That seems right. Also, I did it with the much nicer waxed thread that I had here. And I had to snip a bit off where the old stitches went and I could bring it in a lot tighter than it was before. Before it was um, quite loose. And now it is nice and tight like the rest of them. Probably could come in a little bit more, but it's definitely a better job than I did before, which isn't surprising since this was the first one that I tried. So practice helps a lot. And that's done for the leathering. No more leathering. Is that the end of the episode? Could be. Let's just say that's all we have time for this week or this time. So if you enjoyed what you saw, then feel free to subscribe, you know, and you'll see all the excitement as it comes along. You know, it'll be the Second person to see it. I'm the first person to see all the excitement. But you could be the second person. Wouldn't that be fun? Bye-bye.